Hey everyone, so obviously this is a breakdown of The Mandalorian Chapter 10, so if you haven't seen that episode yet, this is your spoiler warning. I'll do a breakdown of the episode and then give my quick review towards the end of the video. The episode begins with Mando and the child speeding across the Dune Sea. This was cool, and it reminded me of Anakin in Attack of the Clones. Also, one small detail I noticed, but you can still see residue from the crate Dragon's stomach acid on the Mando. I thought this was cool, it just showed the level of detail within the show. After the scuffle in the beginning, Mando walks the rest of the way to Mos Eisley, which is an impressive feat. Pelimoto is playing Sabak with an insectoid creature called Dr. Mandible. We actually saw Dr. Mandible in Chapter 5 while Mando was looking for a bounty hunting job. After winning the game of Sabak, Pelimoto is primed to give Mando his next lead in finding more Mandalorians. Dr. Mandible gives her a contact that knows where a Mandalorian covert is. This contact is a frog creature who speaks no basic at all. This alien is a mother who is hoping to bring her eggs to her husband on the nearby moon of Trask. She tells Mando that he cannot use light speed, otherwise this would damage or kill the eggs she is carrying, the last of her kin. As the Razor Crest is flying through space, it is eventually hailed by two New Republic X-Wings. I loved hearing the X-Wings fly, it was a nice nod to the original trilogy. There are two pilots, one played by Dave Filoni himself. They are essentially patrolling the Outer Rim looking for Imperial holdouts, and they quickly take issue with the Razor Crest's lack of transponder, which is essentially a better way for them to identify ships. The pilots eventually connect the Razor Crest to the prison breakout from Chapter 6. This is the breakout where Mando teams up with some shady characters from his past, and they free the Twi'lek prisoner named Quinn. The New Republic X-Wings begin to pursue the Razor Crest, and it's clear that the Mando won't be able to outfly the X-Wing fighters, so he makes some drastic maneuvers that ultimately lead him to crash through the ice. From here, there isn't too much to break down, other than the fact that the frog alien is apparently pretty intelligent, as she is able to hack into the remains of the droid Zero, and use him as a translator so that she can talk with Mando. I thought that was pretty cool. The frog lady eventually leaves the ship and finds a hot spring in a cave that provides some warmth from the cold planet. By the way, this ice planet appears to just be a random ice planet. Not Hoth, not Ilum. However, based on trailer footage, it looks like we'll visit another ice planet at some point, so a notable planet like Ilum is probably still possible. While regathering her eggs, the child runs off and begins to eat the contents of some mysterious eggs that are spread across the cave. Now I have two observations regarding the child in this episode. First, it seems they emphasized his appetite and mischievousness. I mean, he even eats some of the frog lady's own eggs, which are her offspring. So I'm wondering if we're going to start seeing the child go down a bit darker path this season. The eggs all begin hatching, and a bunch of spider-like creatures are awakened. The chase that ensued really reminded me of both the Chamber of Secrets from Harry Potter and the Return of the King from Lord of the Rings, which I really enjoyed that. The crew makes it back to the Razor Crest and attempts to seal themselves in the cockpit. So the frog lady not only proves to be tech savvy, but also handy with a blaster. She uses her own concealed blaster to aid Mando and save baby Yoda while fighting the spiders. Now these spiders are actually a cool callback to some concept art by Ralph McQuarrie. These spider-like creatures were originally designed for Empire Strikes Back. So at the moment when all seems lost, we hear the distinct sound of X-Wing cannons firing. The pilot, Trapper Wolf, played by Dave Filoni and the other pilot, Carson, arrive to save the day. They tell Mando that the security records show what really happened to the prison facility of Chapter 6. They know that Mando risked his life to save the only human security officer on that facility. This was the guy played by Matt Lantern, who was the voice of Anakin Skywalker in The Clone Wars. They essentially tell Mando that they're even, and he should get the transponder installed on the Razor Crest, or next time they won't be so nice. I thought this was pretty funny considering the Razor Crest is in shambles at this point. Like, more than just a transponder needs fixing here. The episode ends with Mando, the Frog Lady, and the child continuing on their quest to the moon of Trask. Overall, I thought this episode was fine. I know the temptation is to call it a filler episode, and you know what, maybe it is. But I hate using that word, and I think there are some important things that were accomplished by this episode. One of the things is the development that went on with the child. We saw him becoming a little bit more 
difficult for the Mando to control. He rarely listened to Mando and even hinted at a darker side by eating the eggs of the frog lady. Now, this probably was meant to be more funny than anything, but I do think it reflects a potential dark side aspect of the child. The other thing this episode helped with was reminding us of the status of the New Republic. Now, this may not seem like much, but the X-Wing squad patrolling the Outer Rim and looking for Imperial holdouts reminds us who the governing authority in the galaxy is. We're also reminded that Mando is on their radar. It was just helpful in reminding us what's going on in the galaxy at large. I'm looking forward to next week's episode where I'm assuming we'll get something a bit more exciting in terms of plot advancement. That being said, I think episodes like this one are important to look at within the whole season rather than individually. There are also several episodes from season one that didn't do it for me individually, but within the whole story, they served a purpose and even continue to serve a purpose. So let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. Have a great day and may the force be with you.